Okay, now we do a definition of risk. Uh, today we'll have lots of uh, theory part. So today we look at risk. Uh. As a project manager, what mean by risk to the project? It means as long as you're not achieving the customer one, you are at risk. I mean, your objective is to make the customer happy. So how do you quantify uh, customer happy? Means you look at the customer requirement or the project requirement. So as long as you're not making the customer happy, means you're not meeting the project requirement, means you are failed. So here, textbook definition, it means uh, define risk as a probability or consequences of not achieving the project's objective. Okay. As so for example, uh, Can aircraft can 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 you can the specified aircraft uh, range be achieved? For example, so let's say you are designing an aircraft. Um, if you don't uh, if you don't uh, uh, specify your projects uh, well, then uh, you keep finding some parameters is changing. So uh, there's some risk if you're not able to. Uh, specify the aircraft range for example and then uh, the products like computer you are not uh, you, you don't have the budget or you don't have the, the the exact amount of the project then you are actually racing the whole uh, objective and uh, the whole the uncertainty so for example if we give you the probability you learn about statistics before right now the statistic the 100 percent is one uh, the, the the maximum number in statistic is one the, the the minimum number is zero. So for example, if you get a probability measure of 0 0.15, uh, means uh, you have 85% uh, of chance of success. And in this case, probability of not meeting the products is 0 0.15. So there's a risk of 50%, 15%. So we, so there are two cases. Let's say go A and go B. Go A with the probability of occurrence is 0 0.05. Go B with the probability of occurrence is only 0 0.1. Okay, so here uh, it asks you to make a, a, a decision which go is more risky. All right, so you look at the number. This one occurrence means the risk occurrence. So one is at 5%, one is at 20%. Which one is more risky? Okay, so A, A may present much more serious or risky situation than B. Uh, so it means that this one, uh, you see uh, the probability measure here. Uh, uh, this one is say, uh, when risk is considered, the consequences of damage associated with the event occurring must not, uh, must be included. Uh. So if the consequences of not meeting goal A are, in this case, more than, it's more than four times uh, more severe than the uh, inability uh, to meet uh, goal B. Okay, so it means uh, uh, in this case, goal B is more risky. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the question, initial question, if you ask you A and B in, in the very general terms, means goal B is more risky. However, uh, if consequences of not meeting goal A in the, uh, is, is uh, if there's a consequences of not of not meeting go A, then uh, you might need to consider your plan. Uh, right. Okay, so there's an equation come up. Yeah, the equation come out uh, about risk. Risk is the function of probability and consequences. There are two factors you need to consider: probability and consequences. Right. Probability of uh, the event from happening. And the impact or consequences, uh, the amount at the stakes. Uh. So if you look at this uh, graph, so this graph got three axes. One is the event which is pointing outside the, 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 the screen, and the y-axis is probability of loss. So the lowest one is low probability of loss, and uh, y-axis, the highest one is high probability of loss. And then the x-axis uh, is the impact, the magnitude of impact. So from no impact to large impact. 
and then there's a region with this. You see the low low risk region. This one, low risk means you have a with this region is fall within the low probability and low impact. It means you have a very low risk to the event. Then as you grow higher and higher at this region, so it means you have a high loss of probability and large impact. So you are at a uh, high risk. Then here is moderate uh, between the high and low. So here there is no, uh, here is just a qualitative presentation. So data, we have two types. One is quantitative and qualitative. So this is more on illustration and more on like, uh, give you an idea. There's no like exact value of that. Okay. Uh, uh, the rest will read lah. So the first equation is in this one. Risk is a function of probability and consequences. So again, this module is more like you are attending a management uh, degree, right? You, you like a lot of case study, then you explain by what you understand. Okay. There, there are no, no complex calculation like calculus and stuff. So it's just like you make sense, you explain things in, in reason. This one you read, huh? This one you read. Uh, when you talk about risk in engineering term means hazard. So a certain hazard can be overcome when you have more experience in that sense. For example, in the certain road in Malaysia, right, too bad uh, you were in Malaysia with lots of this uh, pothole. Right? So let's say you are driver A and driver B, right? So maybe the first day you go you go to this road, uh, wow, uh, you know very bumpy, right? You know that a oh, certain section is have a hole there. First day you don't know, so you you sure your car will sure can now uh, the the bumpy things one. So but you travel every day, uh, by maybe by the third day, you already know how to avoid the the hole already, right? You know how to avoid. So you are risk of uh, going into the hole is reducing. Means you you know by experience, oh, you cannot go there. Uh. Right, so risk can be uh, mitigated or it can be reduced by experience. Meaning, if you are, have a small company and big company, small company will have more risk or higher risk, or, or new startup have a higher risk compared to the uh, 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 big company with loss of experience. Right, so that's why when we come to investment, uh, those uh, angels, uh, angels foundation, normally they are quite careful when it come to uh, uh, this uh, new startup company because uh, they have a high risk, and then they will assign mentorship program for the new ent entrepreneur because uh, uh, on those those mentor they, they they come with a very uh, very good background, uh, they know what can do, what cannot do. Another definition of risk is in the function of hazard and safeguard. It means how the number of hazard, for example, number of uh, uh, the hole on the road, and how uh, the safeguard means the safety precaution that you take into place. Okay, so the, these are two factors uh, in risk management. Okay, so risk increase with hazard but decrease with safeguard. So it means uh, uh, if you have more safeguard. Uh, or, or protection procedure, uh, then you can reduce the uh, hazard. Maybe still there, but if you have safeguard, uh, more safeguard break, uh, risk the risk will drop. For example, you go to the left inside engineering, so uh, the hazard is there. The the jigsaw, everything is there. The sharp things it was there, but we you are told to like wear the lab, lab coat and so thing, right? So. Uh, some of you, you might hear that you need to wear lab coat and you are struggling to find the lab coat. I heard lah. Huh? So, uh, yeah. So, that, that is uh, the, the risk management thing. Huh? Okay. Uh, okay. Then this is a table for your revision, right? So, sometimes it asks you to explain the risk, issue, problem, opportunity. All right. So, but by this this uh, table, you actually, actually you can you can explain the whole thing. So, how to read this table? Uh, for example, probability. Probability the number is one between one and zero. 
So if the thing uh, 100% will happen one, the probability number is one. So it cannot happen, then zero. Okay. Consequences means uh, uh, the, the stepping stone or uh, it will create trouble for you. Uh, time frame, it can be now or future, or I'm sure. For example, risk. Risk, it can be no risk or totally have risk. So you, you, the probability for risk will be uh, zero to one, but consequences will be more than positive value. Uh, it, if you have risk, you still have cons consequences. Then the time frame, if you talk about risk, you talk about future, what is going to happen, right? And not now. If it happened now, it's not risk. It's something in the future. Uh, okay. Issue. Issue, if you talk about issue, probability is one. Issue is what is happening now. It's happening. So probability is one. I show happen. It's happening now. Consequences is more than positive. Then uh, time frame, you also talk about the future. It's going to happen. Few issues. Huh? So if thought issue means something that sure will happen. Right. Uh, problems. Problem is now. So there's a difference between issue and problem. So I make correction. I just now I mentioned issue is now, but no issue is the future. Problem is now. Okay. So when you write report, uh, uh, if you talk about issue, issue means something going to happen in future, and talk about problem means something happened now. So like you talk about FYP uh, final year projects or your EDPs report. So when you use the term, please be careful on the term. So if you you if you write about some issue, then it means something that you focus to be happen. And then you, when you write the problem statement, problem statement mean, means something that already happened now and you need to solve it. Okay. Uh, opportunity is something that you are not sure. So uh, probability, you are unclear, consequences also, because you don't know whether opportunity can happen or not. And then the time frame is, it can be now, it can be future. So also unclear. So this is how people uh, use the word risk, issue, problems, and opportunity. Okay. So the, the, the rest already explained. So you just read from the slides. Huh? Okay. The rest really laugh. Okay, so there are three uh, classification of tolerance of risk. So you as a project manager, you 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 have a three profile, three kind of profile, right? Either you are adventurous, or you are conservative, or you are neutral. So here you look at three classification of tolerance risk. So this basically uh, how this question can come out is that to ask you to explain the risk to, uh, the risk tolerance uh, or tolerance of for risk classification of uh, tolerance of risk. So to ask you to explain this one, and then uh, you need to come up with an example. Right. So, uh, the first one you see the x axis, uh, the y axis, uh, money, and the u is the uh, utility amount of satisfaction. The y axis is your amount of satisfaction or pressure that individual receive from a payoff, and the x axis is the amount of uh, money or state, but can be potentially represent technical performance or schedule, right? So. The first one, the first profile is risk, risk uh, averter. Second one is risk neutral. The, the last one is a risk seeker. Uh, so how does it mean? It means that when they were the project manager, they make decisions how they tolerate for risk. OK, so for example, the first one. So when more money is at stake, the project manager certificate uh, is, uh, is disappeared. Means you give the the project manager more money, uh, pay you lah, pay you more money. But it seems that the the satisfaction of the uh, the project manager is not motivated. It's not motivated by money. Uh, you give more, 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 and then the, the the project manager kind of like I, I don't want to look at the project anymore. Right? Not excited. Uh, so then the first one is the first one. Then uh, the second one is constant rate means is. The, the, if you pay more, then the project manager will, will, will work harder for you and so on. Right. Then the third one is the, the risk taker. The risk taker is a project manager satisfaction increase at the increasing rate when more money is at stake. So 
there is a difference between the left hand side and right hand side. Right hand side means you want to motivate uh, uh, the, the project manager, you give more money, you give money, then it give you more, give you more, give you more. Then the middle one, it means you, you, you give, you, you can see the performance is linearly with the money. Right? But the, the right hand one, uh, you give a little bit of the performance manager already very excited. Very excited. Then you give another one. You, you perform member triple for per the performance. Okay. Then the the left one is like you even you give more like the performance uh, is like slow down really like maybe at first yeah you perform but as you give more the the, the project manager like the, not excited for the for the for the reward. OK, so there are three kind of profile. You as a, a leader, when you work in the projects, you know like, your, your team member, which, which is their profile. So some team member, you you uh, you blanche them, they are also very happy, and then this one. Then some of you, you need to buy them food and all this are uh, neutral. Uh, then those, uh, maybe your team member, you, no matter what you buy, you buy them stuff also, like they, they do like normal, normal things. You. Then they are done. This one. Okay, so these are these are the three profile. So um, it's important this slide because uh, when the question asks you uh, what kind of uh, how you classify a project manager tolerance of risk or define your understanding uh, of the uh, tolerance uh, for risk as a project manager, then we expect you to draw this three graph, and then you explain about this three three. Okay, uh, so this one will be the like part A kind of question. Ask you like you know, the definition of something, then you explain. Okay, so these are the answer. These are the answer that expect you draw this tree and then you give this tree answer. Short answer is enough. You don't need to. You don't need to go ring now. You don't need to like elaborate a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, risk averter prefer. A uh, more certain outcome uh, will demand a premium at accepted risk. So they will ask for, uh, they will demand for, for money lah, if you want them to take risks. Uh, very conservative kind of uh, project manager. So uh, when you are the first kind, means sometimes your project budget is a big, big amount because you want to play safe. Right? You want to have like, some backup plan. So you will put in more money into your budget. Okay, for risk taker, sometimes you, uh, if you have a more uncertain outcome and they were willing to pay for penalty at the risk, so they will, they will make sure the project success and sometimes they will go back door and do some funny thing. Like, okay, they will take risk for for the success of the projects. Okay, so there's no uh no one type of uh, project manager. It depends as you grow in the company, as you have more projects to take in, then you might switch your profile, you might switch your tolerance of this. Maybe at the beginning, you, you are in the startup company, maybe you are in the left hand side. But as you grow more, more experience, you handle more project, you know about the people around you, then maybe you will switch from the left to right. Because you know your people, you know your team. You know how your sponsor will react at a certain situation, right? So you are more willing to take more risk as you grow in your career. Uh, maybe you work for the first year, maybe you are very conservative. But after 10 years, uh, you know you know your team already. You know, you even know the supplier, how the supplier works already. Uh, you know even how the supplier code their, their projects for you. You know their profit margin. Uh, you know the equipment, you know the technology. Uh, so then you, it's more easier to take risks. Okay. But again, one note, uh, they will not exist at the same time. You will not exist at the same time, but you will change if you grow in the, uh, in the, in the years to come. Uh, you won't have two, two or three profile at the same time. Okay. Okay. So this is a textbook definition for risk management. So just now we talk about risk. Huh? Now we add one more word behind the risk. It's called risk management. 
So when the question look carefully, uh, the question either asks you about risk or it asks you about risk management. Uh, so uh, you know, like management management uh, module they like to play with words. Uh, so just be careful on the the question. Uh, okay. So risk management, you read uh, and then uh, there's a process inside risk management. You do planning, you identify, you do analysis. Okay, you plan, you identify, and you do analysis. Then what is your output? You must respond to something. Okay, you respond, you monitor, you control. It's a cycle. It's a cycle of risk management. Okay, so you have this uh, cycle. So you have you start from uh, planning. Uh, maybe this is a new one. So you start with planning, identify, analyze, risk, monitoring, and controlling. Okay, risk management. Uh, there are different type of uh, more models that uh, out there. Right. So you, some use the left hand side, some you use the right hand side. Doesn't matter as long as you write all the keyword that are highlighted in the blue color. Okay. So let's go for. A, uh, quick uh, revision. What what do you think the answer for this this question? Two major component of risk is what? That's not the group. The, uh, huh? B. B. Yeah. Okay. B. Number two, risk management is normally performed by. Sure, not see lah. Ask for not sure, not see lah. Okay. So what is the answer? A. A, right? okay. This one seems very easy for engineering students. Future outcome that provide favorable opportunity are called B. opportunities. Okay. The cost of risk, uh, the cost of a risk event eventually is called hazard. Hazard. Okay. Now we go to contract management. So contract management, if you look at this one, you know what movie we are referring to. Yeah. Uh, the movie is called Accountant. Very nice movie. Uh, so uh, when we talk about as a project manager, you, you, uh, you should be familiar with the contract management. So there are type of uh, contract. Uh, I'll give you all the answer. Huh? So they are client. And competitor. So client, uh, because when you work for a project, you you will go through a bidding process. Uh, so bidding process, uh, whoever gives the lowest price and can deliver more, they will get the project. Uh, that is the objective of doing bidding. So the client will question the validity of the bid, and then uh, yeah. So normally inside the contract, they will they will have penalties uh, clause. If you don't do this one or you late, then you get penalties. For example, my first job, uh, I work as a project engineer. I was the youngest that time inside the company. My job, I reportedly I report directly to CEO uh, under supervision of a, a, a marketing manager. So what my my daily job is that I deal with customers, I deal with prototypes. So uh, my job is to give quotation and make sure that prototype are successfully delivered to the customers. And then once the prototype accept by the customers, I pass it to production floor. So last time my my company is doing the precision metal stamping. Uh, one of the product is doing the hard disk drive, uh, the casing for the hard disk drive. So there's a forming, there's a cutting hole size and all this. So you need to uh, have meetings almost every day. Um, so you need to make sure you need in the quotation. The first thing is uh, the, the, the price. Uh, so the unit price for most of my project will be million pieces. They come by million pieces. And then there are some offset or there are some like if you order 1 million, what price? 2 million, what price? 3 million, what price? So there's a discount rate for up to uh, uh, 5 million pieces. So, uh, so to encourage the customer to buy more from us. 
So the company is doing the, the, the precision beta stamping. The project include we need to design the pressing jet, uh, the pressing the pressing tools, the press the to, to, to press the, the shape out, uh, to cut the things and so on. Plus, we count by pieces. So there are two quotations every, every time I need to do. So one, I, I quote for the equipment. Plus, I sell you one piece how many parts per million piece. So uh, one, one equipment, there's a markup value there. Maybe minimum also a few hundred thousand. So maybe 200,000. Plus, you, when you start order, you start with one million pieces. So one piece will be we sell you like 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents. So you multiply like by 1,000. So of course it will be a headache when it comes to QA. So if one QA, uh, QA side will be failed, we send one million piece over there. Uh, customer check maybe two or three pieces fail, the whole lot will reject. So that is a case. Lah. So when you manage projects, uh, there's a clause there. So one time uh, when I knew, uh, uh, one time I was like, so uh, you, you, when you fresh grade, uh, everything like you think of very perfect. So uh, that time I deal with the German company, German customers that overseas on. So there are three ways of uh, delivery projects. One is by flight. Uh. So you imagine that uh, 20 years ago, Asia also don't have, right? So when you want to deliver, the most expensive one is FedEx. Uh. Very fast, but expensive. Then that time also don't have internet, like WhatsApp, all this. So when you want to communicate, you have to stay back and then dial the numbers up. Then you communicate with your own international call. So that time, only three mode, airplane, ship, and also land. land. So when you want to go to, uh, want to send prototypes, the first, the first sample to the customers, the fastest one is aircraft, but normally aircraft very expensive. So my boss, he prefer a slower way. Maybe we choose shipping. So shipping maybe it takes like one month to reach there or three weeks to reach there. So at that time I was like, I was new one. So I was very weak in the markup kind of uh, calculation. So everything like I I, I calculate very true one, very true like okay. My 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 production for need three weeks. So I like very stupid like I tell my customers, uh, I will need three weeks. Like, so, but something happened at production four, there is a delay. So they, I think there is a, uh, that time, because of the production four issues, uh, there's a delay of two weeks or two weeks or three, I think two weeks, two weeks. Uh, so the penalty in the agreement actually they mentioned like one day, how? Three thousand. Three thousand. Because we are we are we are we are doing precision parts and like we are making phones and all this. So if you delay like one day, that they, they, over that side they, they are able to like produce the things. Like for example, Nokia. Last time uh, Nokia, Ericsson and all this. So they want to come up with a new model. So if you late like one week, you lost the competitor already. So uh, so but my boss is very good like, say okay like three D as uh, your your first lesson. So he say okay never mind we pay. Uh, but take that as a lesson. That time I was quite scared like, because uh, I wait late for like two weeks or maybe like two weeks, 14 days. One day is like a few thousand. So, like, like, I was like, very scared. Like. And then uh, my, my boss is very kind to me. I like, say, uh, I'm come, I talk to you. I say, this one, uh, you know, like, when you do business, you have to, you have to counter all these things. Then, uh, uh, okay, like, then, and he say, okay, like, never mind, I will pay. Like, because, because actually we make a lot of money. Uh, because from the quotation, I know how, how the business works. So actually the, the profits in there, even though we minus the thing. Because what we want is the future business. Because one time it's a few million pieces. They say, never mind. We pay for that. Then we pay, then we do everything. Then at the end, we, we, we finally launched the projects. Uh, we ma I managed to pass the, the, the project to the production floor. Then from there, we still make money. Uh, so that is the things uh, when they come to reach this one. So when you go to work later, um, all of you, you have been, been to internship, right? So when you go to work later, especially if you handle projects, make sure you mark up. Uh, so mark up like, okay, if you engineering, tell you like three weeks, then you tell them like five weeks or six weeks. 
then when you deliver or you tell the customer we need six week, but you deliver uh, production floor only finish at the, maybe in week three, maybe the delay for four week. But you tell the customer, hey, my, I, I, I can I can give you like five weeks, so I take time. So because you, you probably spend six weeks. Right? Then at the fifth, fifth week, you call them. Uh, I mean, you, you keep the things with yourself. Then you call the customers and uh, say, hey, no, I work very hard. You know, I mean, you're going uh, and tell the story. Uh, I know my team uh, work uh, to rush the thing for you, but actually only finish a week. I think for you, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, finally we managed to, to, to rush the thing for you. Uh, and we, um, we're going to ship up today. This is fifth week, so we are a bit early from the schedule. So the customer is very happy. Uh. Uh, in, fact, in fact, you only need three weeks. But you tell the customer with six weeks or something. So this is a uh, these are a few 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 games uh, that you can play. Uh, of course, you must communicate well with your boss uh, and uh, make sure that the, the, the information do not leak out. Uh, if your if your planning is like three weeks and you promise six weeks, then your boss your boss forget your boss forget and then tell the customer like three weeks and then you are gone. Uh, then you are gone. Yeah. So the another one is competitor, uh, competitor, and so on. So all this is real, uh, all this is real. Okay. okay. Now we are in the contract management, and then uh, there's a production called procurement. Procurement means uh, you order like a sales planner and all this. So procurement means you buy things. Uh, you buy things. Here it means physical things and also services. There are two things, ah. Uh. Procurement, it can be services, it can be goods or physical items. Okay. So the rest we read. Huh? So procurement or contracting involve two parties. Right? We have two parties. One is buyer, buyer and seller. In the contract, they will mention who is buy, who is selling. Okay, the rest we read. What is good procurement practice? Of course, in the business, the first thing is the profitability. I must make profit and by taking how you make profit. Ah, so, I mean, the main point here, good procurement practice is to make money. Ah, uh, of course, in, in the answer, you must uh, try to use the yellow color keyword. Ah, use the word profit or make profit. Ah, don't use, don't write make money. Use the word profit, uh, make profit, sorry. And no need, but the keyword is profit. Uh, okay, so a good procurement is to make money, is to, is to make profit, make sure the company making money or uh, profit. And then how? So when you answer the question, then after you give the, the answer, the keyword, followed by how? There's a structure there uh, when you answer. So how you make profit? By giving discount, minimize cash flow problems, and high quality, seek up high quality suppliers. So why high quality supplier can help you to make profit? High quality means they they give you less trouble. Because if you give if you find a low quality supplier, maybe the parts broke down in the middle. Then you have to sort out a few few more things, right? Now last time my my, my first job my, my my company, the one the story I tell you the the company actually is, uh. The most expensive, uh, most expensive uh, precision uh, precision manufacturing, uh, can say in the Yeah, uh, the quote the, the quotation is is the most expensive. But we deliver the fastest. We can give the shortest lead time to the customers. So that's why we stay in the business for a long time. We quote very expensive, but we deliver time very. Because the, the engineering team, they are very good. So they're able to produce the result in the short time. And then the, the boss also willing to invest those expensive CNC machine and automation machine. So, uh, okay. Okay, the rest will be done. Um, okay, there are two strategies for procurement strategies. One is corporate, one is project. Corporate one, um, corporate strategies is that you centralize everything. So that's why you see those making money company, they have a HQ. Everything they refer to HQ rather than 
they they give authority to a small small subsidiaries. Okay, uh, then the HQ will oversee the the whole thing. Another one is the you go to the project procurement strategies, you give authority to the project manager to 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 monitor. So it depends on the culture of the company. Both also works because both also generating profit. Just now we define what is good procurement. Right? So as long as you make profit, then it's good. Uh, so if you have a become a big company like Petronas, then they will adopt corporate procurement strategies because uh, they already have everything they go to the set HQ. Uh, because HQ have the previous history, they have a big data for them to help them to make decisions. But for the small startup, normally they will go for project procurement strategies. Okay. Especially those R and D. Right? R &D. Okay. So the rest is read. Uh, information is there. Read up. Okay, then uh, primary objective. If you all are. so primary objective of the procurement, uh, it can be either one of these, meaning you buy in one from one source, means you outsource with one sub vendor, that vendor do all with everything. Uh, one of the example is that uh, in the construction or in the this uh, A B and B business, um, you are the developer. So how you sell your units? You find one vendor or one investor, you rent the whole building, whole office building to one company. And then that company go and find small, small companies, go and rent from, from, from the building. Okay, so the first one is this one. Procurement means you suck the thing up. You don't need to worry. And then you only have one contact with them. Okay, the first one is a single source. A second one is multi, multiple source. Multiple source, normally you have more than uh, more than one pass or component. For example, Proton or BMW. You have, uh, you want to assemble a car, you have lots of components. So from there, uh, it's better you use a second method, multiple sources uh, as a backup plan. Right? So procurement only in a small portion or procured none of the good business. So there are four, four decisions here. Selection. Either you don't you don't buy anything. Okay. Okay, then we talk about environment, the procurement environment. So they are big environment and small environment or micro and micro. Macro, micro. Huh? Okay, the rest of it are. Micro environment is uh, we look at enterprise, uh, for example, world recession, inflation, country inflation, uh, cost of living, uh, and so on. Okay. That is a micro environment factor when you buy things, you need to consider, right? And unemployment also. Unemployment rate also will affect your procurement process. Why you need worker? As a project manager, you need worker. So if it is the unemployment, then uh, it also will increase the the risk of the projects. Okay, there are some example. Enterprise environment factor. Uh, so this one is a foreign corporate. They take a few contractor, so on. Uh, now, because of the country high unemployment rate at that time, so the decision can be made. They only use domestic supplier or contractor because of the macro environment. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and then give the first preference to the contractor in the city where unemployment was the greatest. It means they, they, they give chances to those uh, cities with a high rate of uh, unemployment rate. At least normally for the government projects. Okay. So this is uh, on a macro, macro things. Micro, micro is more on the internal company process. 
mean something outside within the company. Uh, so company policies, how's the, 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 the way the manager works and so on. Okay, so according to the guidebook, PM guidebook, the procurement system have four process. Okay, four process is important. Plan, conduct, administer, and close. You plan, you conduct, you administer, and you close. These are the four main process in the procurement system. Okay, so this also a uh, very popular question for section A kind of question, right? So you ask you like, uh, the, very direct, like, the question will ask you like procurement system, in the procurement system, mention the processes, uh, mention the processes in the procurement system. Basically, it asks you this for, for answer. Okay, this for section kind, uh, A kind of question. Okay, now we're done with the thing. We go, go fast a little bit, then uh, maybe we end a bit early. Like. Okay. Uh, contract management, the rest you read. Again, contract, you need to remember, you have two parties, buyer and seller. So here, seller is the contractor. Okay. Uh, means buyer is the one to offer contract. Okay, the rest you read. Um, yeah, the rest you read. Huh? We've got a few activities there. Okay. So there are few, few, few process. Read that. Huh? It's like it's gonna read. There are lots also. Lots of things, huh? So this one, uh, there are few terms in a contract. Uh, not going to read every one of it. So inside contract, they will mention all these things, all the cost, profit, ceiling, price, and so on. So go and read that. Huh? This one also, so a few terms about inside the contract. What are the maximum fees and also. Okay. So we go into these five, five types of contract. Right. Five type of contract. You have uh, FP, fixed price. You have uh, CP, CPPF or CPFF, cost plus fixed free. The third one is GMSS. Guaranteed maximum share sharing. FPIF, fixed price incentive free. Uh, CPIF, cost plus incentive free. So this basically is very, very theory kind of phase. So uh, I will let you know if this will come up in the assessment. Okay, so you just go there and read the, the definition of this, this uh, five type of things. Okay, so I go very fast in this one. You go and read. Uh, what is important for the first one? Fixed price means in a contract already mentioned already. For example, fixed price for your employee, like, like your internship contract, uh, incentive one a month for three months, for example. Fixed already, right? Okay, don't, you don't need to, to worry about your, your, your claims, transportation claim, no need. Everything is one in one contract. Okay, the first one is fixed price. The rest you read, uh, the rest you read. I just summarize everything in uh, one or two sentences. Second one, the cost plus fix free. This one a bit flexible. Means uh, you have a future value and a current value. Uh, so there's an incentive there. For example, you are in the you're in the you work as a sales force. Sales force, marketing force are those that if you go to uh, uh, Eon, Eon uh, shopping mall there, the one that's selling the the, the, the condo or the the cars one, huh? so you have a minimum pay plus incentive. Means if you like sell one car, what is the percentage of commission? That kind of things. Huh? So this is a cost plus fixed price, uh, fixed fees. Okay. So there's a there's a incentive there. There's a very cost there. The rest you read, huh? so, the third one is GMSS, Guarantee Maximum Share Saving. So the, this one, they will give you a guarantee ma maximum. Right, so the contractor is paid at a fixed fee for profit and reimburse the actual cost of engineering. 
So this is more on construction. So if you are applying the GMSS contract, means uh, you are guaranteed for your profit. Uh, and you can do reimbursement, means you can claim your, your equipment rental, uh, all the all the heavy machine or labor costs you can claim from the from the contract. Uh, this is GMSS. Means that you already you already settle for your profit right? it, before you start the project. You start negotiating what, how many money you're going to make from these projects. Then the rest of the cost you you, you negotiate lah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, the rest you read. Uh, again, this is the best form of the negotiate contract because you already know how much money you make. This one normally works for the consultancy. If you want to open up consultancy, then it works for this one, GMSS. Okay. The third one, fixed price incentive free. Uh, it's the same as the first one, but there is a clause there that you can make uh, adjustment for the total profit. This adjustment that you can make to the profit. Okay, so this one you read. Uh. The last one is P CPIF. CPIF is the same as a cost plus contract, which is the second one. Plus they have an adjustment of free by a certain formula. So the last one is more on the R&D projects. For example, you take a project from the ministry, uh, you do like ERL, uh, the train projects and all this. So this one or R&D projects, uh, for example, military, military projects, you have them to, to do some R&D. And uh, like for example, the one, uh, the COVID kit, all these things, uh, they're under this one, uh, cost plus incentive free. This one, they will the company place more risk on the contractor. Means that the, the Ministry of Health will, will sub, sub this contract to the pharmaceutical company. Hey, you're going you go and uh, do uh, one one task kit for us. Then you negotiate uh, this one, the position. So the rest you read, uh, advantages and disadvantages, also very popular in management kind of question. Right? So this one maybe come into section B or section A kind of question. You can combine A and B. So go and read uh, uh, this one if uh, this kind of question come up. Uh, sure will come up one. Uh, just go and read. And I don't expect you to memorize everything. At least two or three points. To be secured, remember three points. So for example, this one only two, uh, but if it's only two, then you remember two. Uh, yeah, you get my, my PowerPoint. You don't need to step photo. You'll get my, my PowerPoint site in the canvas. Uh, not yet. After today, uh, you will see the PowerPoint steps. Okay. So all this you read, uh, advantages, the advantages. Go ahead. Okay. So do the quiz. The first one, contractor settlement of work document is what? Try to guess. Uh. Contractor settlement of work. So C, a written document that describes, defines, specified services or item to be procured is called what? Of course, not gun chart. Uh, it's a, a specification document. Order of precedence is what? Do you understand the precedence? No, no. Okay. Uh, later, this one will be come out and we'll go into a few chapter. For example, you build a uh, you build a house, right? Build house. This is wall, and then this is roof. Before you before you build the roof, you must go. You must build the wall first. So roof is the precedence of. No, wall is the precedence of roof. Means that you must. Do something first, then only you can do that. Okay. So, this uh, human say the order. 
when you see the word proceedings is something that you need to do for the night. Important is the word order, priority. Uh, priority. Okay, the fourth one is give you the answer. So this one, because you need to read much, so give you the answer. So contract management, uh, talk about contract management, the contractor least likely want to control cost is the cost plus percentage of cost. Uh, is the least likely things. The fifth one, which type of the contract? Contract management is the contractor most likely want to control cost. Just now is the least one to uh, least one to control cost. This one is fixed firm fixed price. Firm fixed price. This is because you are the one who receive the contract. You want to negotiate uh, the control cost. Because let's say let's say your project is you need you need uh, you need one million. Of course you 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 want to negotiate the fixed price. Must be more than one million. We start of the contract management is a contractor at the most risk absorbing all the costs over and means you are the one who absorbing all your costs. This one. Okay. So fixed price evokes for is fixed price, uh, fixed price, a uh, firm fixed price contract. They are very good for the buyers. Means the one issue contract. Of course, you, 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 you can uh, press the gun, you can press down the, the price by one process. Of course, it's not, it's not very good for the, for the supplier. So the supplier must be smart enough to, to, to play around. Okay. Uh, but if you're if you're a new startup company, normally uh, you will feel pressure on this. But if you are a well established company, like for example, Petron, uh, no, cannot say Petronas. Uh, another example, uh, if you are a well established company, uh, then you you know how to mitigate the risk. So you can play these games very well compared to other competitors. Number seven. Again, guess the type of the contract. Customers as the most risk of absorbing excessive cost overrun. Just now is the, the, the all, all cost overrun. Now is the most. Most one is the first one, uh, cost plus percentage of cost. So there is a, there is a playing of words here in the, in the management model. Uh, the eight, what is the primary objective of customer project manager? Focus on focus on when selecting a contract type. A, B, C, none of them. Customers project manager. If you are the project manager, what 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 will you choose? Transfer all risk to contractor, create reasonable contractor risk, retain all project risk, uh, reducing contract costs. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. Design also type of contract. This one designed to give a contractor the lead. For the inflation of material costs and increase in the long run, long term contract. Okay, of course, the deal with the adjustment. Which of the following is not a factor to consider when selecting a contract type? Complexity, urgency, extent of price completion, all factors. Which one? What do you think? For oh, question 10. What do you think? Okay. Oh, okay. 
pattern and uh, property intellectual properties also, uh, this also the last section, uh, let's go maybe another three minutes. We call it they have. Right. This is actually the last, last thing already. Okay, we saw this, this item before. Saba saw this thing ever. This one was patterned by David in somewhere 1993. This kind of design, right? But that pattern is something, the curved one is outside. Right? But uh, people like copy the thing and then reverse the thing. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, if you follow a pie pattern, you reverse or not reverse also, you are using the pattern. Because the pattern actually is the, the, the method of using the things. Okay, this one is a smooth one, but then, um, so, uh, but this one is a new product, so because this one is a smooth, it's a smooth one, but uh, the idea is that they be able to hold the, the car. Okay, so, uh, so this chapter is more on the pattern and properties. The rest of read now, IP is what it want. Huh? IP normally is for new products, something that is new. In the market, okay. Let's read on. Then, this one you read on. Uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this chart is very important for you to uh, explain what actually is pattern and uh, intellectual properties. Uh, so this one got a few things you can explain. Huh? intellectual properties. You got pattern, trademark, copyright, and trade secret. So there are four things you can explain. This kind, this chart can help you to answer ten marks kind of question. Okay, two mark, uh, maybe here, here, maybe two marks, two mark, two mark, two mark. Maybe eight, it can be three, 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 twelve marks, or somewhere ten mark, thanks to twelve marks. Then you explain example. So intellect property, you have patterns. Under pattern, you have three utility design and uh, plan pattern. Then trademarks, copyright, and trade. So you look at the photo here, you know what actually they can mean. Okay, so utilities, they are keyword there. Utility patterns, they must fulfill useful, novel, and uh, non ambiguous. What does it mean? The design must be new, nobody invented before. It must be useful to the end user, not something that is useless. It must be useful, must be performed at a certain function. And is non non uh, non uh, non of non non obvious. Uh, means you have you have the distinctive features. Eh? You can like uh, anyhow say here uh, this is an uh, item. So you must able to identify oh this is that item. Okay. Uh, then the second thing is the design pattern. This one is design is how you dimension the shape and all this. So it's a bit different from a utility design pattern and uh, uh, utility patterns and design pattern. Design is more the the, the shape, the how how it looks. Huh? It's more the design the design dimension. Uh, this one is more on the clothing, uh, hats, all these things, right? All the design consumer things. Uh, what else? Huh? Okay, then the plant pattern. Plant pattern, of course, you discover the breed, new, new trees, new plant, new human tree. Uh, this one you can do, uh, for example. Okay, so this one, this tree requires formal application. We need to submit a, a document to apply for that number. Trademarks, you know, like IP, all those uh, funny, funny symbols, uh, apple loops, all these. So they are symbols or words, or they are called trademarks. Okay, it can be alphabet, it can be a symbol. So, uh, so this one, it may or may not be registered, sometimes not necessarily, but it depends on country. Right? So if you think that uh, you are so, uh, for example, Nike, Nike, they register because they think uh, at early stage, they, they don't register, but at, later they register because uh, of the, this, uh, of, the, the chip plug things. Uh. Okay. 
Because uh, there's some there's sometimes there's one country that very good in copying things. Uh, okay. Uh, because it's recorded, I cannot mention the one. Okay. Uh, copyright. So copyright is the things that your original work or expression. See the C with the symbol C that one. Uh, and then the track secret. Track secret here, the most famous example is Coca Cola. Okay. So it, it must be useful and it might not need a uh, register. For example, trade secret can be those uh, your mother's uh, secret recipe and also can. Those nasi lemak always also can. But it's a trade secret. Things that people will buy from rich. So. Okay, so the rest explanation, you go and read. Lah. All this definition, all this very textbook one, you go and read. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, so these are example, trademarks, copyrights, right? Copyrights, and the years. Important is the years, lah. The duration of years, ninety-five years. Okay, trade secret. This one, Coca-Cola. Um, Coca-Cola. It can be uh, yeah. Coca-Cola is the one. Um, Okay, so there are there are steps of uh, founding a company. Okay, just memorize the steps. Okay, um, some if you're doing business uh, school uh, certification of this, you have to uh, explain this one like two pages, three pages kind of answer. But for your module, I, I don't expect you to write it wrong. As long as you can mention so these seven steps, that we are okay for the IP kind of issue. Okay. So, like for example, uh, bench, uh, what are the what are the steps? Uh, in the question, we won't tell you how many, but we will tell you. Uh, ask you to uh, uh, we use a word to ask you to give steps for the process in pursuing the factors. Then we mention this this seven. You uh, formulate plan, you study, outline, write. Refine, pursue, and reflect. So uh, this is a few exercises uh, that you can do, but not necessary. You, you need to do. Uh, so this this is more like a project kind of uh, question. Okay, again, I haven't defined what you need to do for your projects, but maybe I will ask you to find a pattern, and then you three D print it on you. Make a report for that uh, item, for example. Right. Okay, so with this, we go to chapter one. Chapter one. Okay, stop the recording. Okay, we are, we are done.